The UE4 player character blueprint is very handy, but it stops moving vehicles in their tracks no matter what their mass. Railroads Online deals with this issue by allowing the player to pass through the vehicle. However, I would like the player to be pushed aside by the vehicle and for the vehicle movement to continue more or less unimpeded. One way to achieve this would be to rebuild the player character from the ground up based on a physics body. This would mean losing, or having to recreate, all of the handy functionality that comes with the stock player character blueprint. As a workaround, I added a blueprint interface method to the BPI character and named it Add Vehicle Collision Impulse. I added a player collision tag to the player character collision capsule. In the rail vehicle blueprint, I placed a box collision at the front of the vehicle and in the collision settings ticked the Generates Overlap Events box. It has custom collision, query only, and is of type World Dynamic. It is set to only overlap actors of type Pawn. In the event graph, when the collider senses an overlap by a component that has a player collision tag, it calls the add vehicle collision impulse method on that component's parent and passes in the vehicle's velocity vector. In the player character blueprint, the vector passed in with the add vehicle collision impulse interface method is split into its x and y components. The z component of the impulse is calculated based on the sum of their absolute values. The z component is always positive and is clamped to reduce the likelihood of the player being sent flying halfway across the map. Next, the shorter of the x and y axes is found. This is the axis that points away most from the direction of the travel of the vehicle and is multiplied by the sideways multiplier to move the player out of the path of the vehicle. Finally, the impulse vector is created from the x, y and z components multiplied by the impulse multiplier variable that helps to control how violently the player character reacts to the impact. This impulse vector is fed into the add impulse node of the character movement component. Remember to tick the velocity change box for the impulse to have an effect. You can also change the mass of the player character's capsule in the physics section to affect its reaction to impulses. Another issue with the UE4's player character is that when the player character is on board a vehicle and walks into one of the sides, it pushes the vehicle in the direction of the player character's movement input. To overcome this, I added box colliders as sides to the vehicle and set them to generate overlap events. They are custom, query only, world dynamic and ignore everything except world dynamic components. In addition, I gave them a vehicle wall tag. In the player character blueprint, I added box colliders on all four sides of the capsule. These have the same settings as the vehicle walls, but don't have a tag. I created a boolean variable to work in tandem with each of the colliders to keep track of whether the player can move in the direction of any given box collider. When one of the colliders is overlapped by a component that has a vehicle wall tag, it sets the corresponding boolean to false. When the overlap ends, it sets the boolean back to true. The booleans are then used in the movement code to prevent the player from moving outside the walls of the vehicle. Plonking a player onto a vehicle, especially if the vehicle is in motion, can give strange results. Railroad Online's mechanic of scooping the player onto a moving vehicle fits the meta of that game. However, having implemented the collision mechanic discussed earlier in this video, I have tried to adapt the entry system to work from the side of the vehicle rather than the front or rear. The system consists of a box collision that generates overlap events, set to custom, query only, and type world dynamic that senses only overlaps with pawn actors. The second component is also a box collision, but this has both query and physics enabled and blocks pawn actors. The third component is a box collision that senses when the player has finished boarding and is inside the vehicle. In the case of this open wagon, the center of this box needs to be placed higher than the walls of the vehicle in order to let the player enter. On a locomotive or passenger carriage, the center of the box just needs to be above the floor. 
When the player overlaps the boarding area, the lift platform is placed below the player and moves upwards over time until it reaches the height of the boarding sensor. When the player moves towards the center of the vehicle, they leave the boarding sensor and the lift platform is reset to its lowered position. This is what it looks like in the event graph of the vehicle. The pilot platform moving boolean is used to make sure that the animation doesn't restart while the player is being lifted by the platform. The player half height variable is set to a little over half the height of the player character's collision capsule so that the platform isn't colliding with the player before it starts to move. A timeline is used to interpolate the Z location of the lift platform towards the Z location of the boarding sensor. When the boarding sensor fires an on component end overlap event, the lifting platform resets to its default position defined by a scene component attached to the body of the vehicle. The lift platform in this example stretches the entire width of the vehicle and sticks out either side. It can be activated by boarding areas and boarding sensors on the right and left of the vehicle.